The exposure dial is usually found on the top right hand side of most DSLR cameras and allows us to change how we wish to make the exposures in the various photographs that we take. There are three types of exposure settings that we will be concerned with in this tutorial. These settings are automatic, semi-automatic and manual. The fully automatic settings include the green button found on most DSLRs and also the scene modes which will include automatic settings for a range of photographic situations such as portraiture, sports and landscape photography. It's often easy to work out what each of these are for from the symbols on the dial such as a mountain shape for landscapes, a woman's head for portraiture and a running man for sports. Although these settings can offer a quick and simple way to take a photograph, they have a number of drawbacks. A major issue is that by using a fully automatic mode, you are allowing the camera to do your thinking for you. This takes away the technical and as a result, the creative control in the image. As photographers, we should be able to know how to control settings such as aperture size, shutter speed and ISO amongst others in order to create the photograph that we want to show to others and not the one that the camera wants to give us. I'll be going into more depth about how to use the exposure triangle in another video. The semi-automatic dial known as TV or S for shutter speed is the dial that we would use when we want to capture fast motion when photographing sports, for example. One point to be aware of is that some sports will need faster shutter speeds than others. For example, the speedboats in my photograph here needed at least one five hundredth of a second to keep them sharp and crisp, whereas the runners may have needed only one two hundredth of a second. The cyclists may need a slightly faster shutter speed than that, but not as fast as for racehorses, for example. Getting the right shutter speed for the action that you want to capture will take practice, but it's important to bear some general rules of thumb in mind. For example, action that is moving towards the camera will generally require a slightly slower shutter speed than action that is moving from left to right across the camera. This type of action can also require some advanced techniques such as panning. Once you set the shutter speed in the camera using the semi-automatic TV or S mode it will hold that shutter speed until you change it. The camera will then select an appropriate aperture to give a correct exposure. Another very useful semi-automatic exposure mode is the A or sometimes called the AV mode. This stands for aperture priority or aperture value which basically mean the same thing. The camera will allow you to set the aperture that you need and it will select a shutter speed setting to work with it for a balanced exposure. If you look at the top column of this camera screen you can see the shutter speed which is next to the blue AV window changing as I move the aperture dial. These are the numbers with the F in front of them which are also known as F stops. Putting the camera in aperture priority mode can be one of the most creative settings in the camera and it has lots of different uses. The main reason for this is that the aperture controls depth of field which can make the image appear to be out of focus in part or in focus across the whole scene. I will be looking at depth of field in greater detail in another video. However, let's have a quick look at how changing the aperture can change the image to emphasize objects or to show sharpness 
throughout the whole scene. In this first image, the aperture chosen was quite small, in technical terms, f16. This has produced sharpness from the sign to the house in the background. This is not necessarily a problem and can work well, particularly if the intention is to say this house is protected by CCTV. Have a look at the difference when I use a much wider aperture, such as in this scene where I've used f2.8. The sign is now isolated from the background and it really grabs the eye well without any distracting elements. Portraiture is an area of photography where the wider aperture is used to isolate the subject and prevent the viewer's eye from being distracted by the background. This is my intention in my shot of Tiger Woods at a press conference. Same is true of my image of the fashion model. There was no point in going very small with the aperture as we don't need to include the background. And closer inspection of this image will show that really only her eyes are sharp, although it's still possible to see the hair and makeup. One quick tip, if you are going to focus anywhere on a person's face, it has to be on the eyes. Keep the eyes sharp and the rest of the face will look natural to the viewer. A style of portrait photography that may not benefit from blurring the objects in the background is environmental portraiture. In this type of photography, it can be useful to keep the background in focus, or at least to make it discernible, so that the main subject is put into the context of the surroundings. In this image of the owner of a Seattle magic shop, the background is very sharply focused. The middle aperture setting, in this case f8, allowed for some sharpness to extend behind him, but he's also standing quite close to the shelves, which would make them difficult to blur, even with a wider aperture. Being able to change the aperture quickly has a place in many types of photography, including landscapes. In the first image, the wider aperture has left some of the background slightly blurred and put focus on the bush. In the second image, all of the scene from front to back is in focus. As the photographer, deciding which aperture works best for the image is part of the creative process. And ultimately, it's your photograph and your decision. The final exposure mode I will look at here is the manual setting. This is usually given the letter M on the exposure dial. I've taught photography students who firmly believe that this is the mode to use as a professional photographer and to not do so is to not get the most from your camera. They're often quite surprised when I tell them I rarely use it other than when working with artificial lighting such as a clip-on speed light attached to the camera or powerful strobe lighting in the studio. In manual exposure mode, both the shutter speed and the aperture have to be set by the photographer and adjusted by use of a gauge in the viewing screen. This can be time consuming and lead to shots being missed, especially if fast action is unfolding in front of you. Some photographers get so caught up in making these changes for the sake of them that the creative aspects are forgotten. Apertures may no longer be as wide or as small as the scene requires, or shutter speeds become too slow to freeze the action. Of course I do use manual exposure mode, but this is often for indoor use when I've predetermined the aperture that I want and I'm adjusting the lighting. As you can see in this image of a very large family group where I'm taking a flash meter reading before I set the exposure in the camera manually. To finish the video I'll give a quick summary of exposure modes. There are three main types of exposure settings. The automatic A button is often green or blue and it gives the camera complete control over the aperture and shutter speed settings. It's great for a quick and easy way to grab a shot. 
but it doesn't allow for creative control over the image. The semi-automatic settings, A or AV for aperture priority, or TV or S for shutter priority, are probably the most useful. They allow you to get complete control over the image quickly and often with eye-grabbing results. Manual exposure mode requires the photographer to set both the aperture and the shutter speed and adjust them until the exposure is correct. It has a use for more advanced technical work as when setting up studio lighting, but can be a hindrance for some types of photography. I hope you enjoyed this short video and found it useful. For more information about my work, free videos, and to book a Skype lesson with me, please visit my website, adurimages.com, or find me on Facebook or Twitter. Enjoy your photography and let me know if I can help with understanding your camera.